Thank you. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Um, and it's great to see everyone here. And we didn't know when we planned this that we'd have such, such a great response. But um, it, it's wonderful uh, that we're celebrating this, this book that's that really saved economics in some sense. Um, classical economics, sensible economics, Austrian economics it was almost completely dead when Mises published this book. So um, we're here to honor, honor, honor him and to remember the book and, and to, to see that it's really a living work. Okay. Um, I want to thank, first of all, before I start, uh, my longtime friends, uh, Murray and, and Flo Sabrin, for sponsoring this talk. Um, I must confess, I'm a little bit nervous not giving this talk, just knowing that I, I'm the only thing that stands between you and lunch. <laughs> but, but, so I ask for your forbearance. Um, human action is the, is the foundational work of modern Austrian economics, and that is reason enough for reading it. But there is an equally compelling reason for carefully studying Mises' great treatise, for it is the antidote to the real and immediate threat to human liberty and society represented by the prevailing social philosophy of progressivism. After the collapse of the Soviet Union and other communist regimes, almost all variants of leftism abandoned conventional Marxism and gathered under the banner of progressivism. This was especially true in Western countries, where the left achieved a, a powerful influence on policy via democratic elections. Indeed, progressivism is far more insidious than Marxism, precisely because it rejects class conflict and violent revolution, and fervently embraces democracy as the true path to the perfection of humanity. Progressives view history as an onward and upward march to a utopian future, an egalitarian, socialist state efficiently run by dis disinterested bureaucrats, intellectuals, and technocrats. Despite their fervent desire for, for egalitarian socialism, however, uh, contemporary progressives have learned from the collapse of communism that trying to substitute central planning for the market economy leads to poverty, famine, and economic collapse. They therefore propose to retain uh, a shrunken, truncated market economy that is heavily tax regulated and controlled. Capitalists and entrepreneurs will be subject to a blizzard of orders, decrees, and prohibitions, and forced to work to support the state apparatus and its financial cronies and official victims groups. In other words, interventionism, not full-blown socialism, is the political economy of progressivism. Mises was one of the first to recognize that the economic program of progressivism is interventionism, as laid out by Karl Marx and Frederick Engels in the Communist Manifesto. As Mises stated, quote, it is impossible to understand the, the mentality and the program and the policy of the progressives if one does not take into account that the Communist Manifesto is for them both writ, both manual and holy writ, the only reliable source of information about mankind's future as well as the ultimate code of political conduct, unquote. According to the Communist Manifesto, the most effective means for achieving the socialist economic utopia is through democracy. As Marx and Engels proclaimed, quote, the first step in the revolution is to establish democracy, unquote. Once established, democracy would, quote, raise the proletariat to the ruling class, unquote. Political, political conditions would then be ripe for imposing interventionist met methods, or what Marx and Engels called despotic inroads on the rights of property, unquote. In their own words, these measures included, among others, a heavy progressive or graduated income tax, abolition of all right of inheritance, centralization of credit in the hands of the state by means of a national bank with, a state, with state capital and an exclusive monopoly, centralization of the means of communication and transport in the hands of the state, and free education for all, child, all children in public schools. In short, interventionism. It was not until a decade, decade later that Marx adopted the contrary view that socialism would inevitably supersede capitalism without the need for mass democracy and interventionist methods. Uh, indeed, the later Marx condemned interventionism as reactionary. Capitalism, he declared, would, would collapse from its own inner contradiction, culminating in violent revolution and the dictatorship of the proletariat, or the working class. Any attempts to speed up the coming of socialism by the undermining capitalism were, therefore, both unnecessary and counterproductive. 
So almost from the beginning, there were two contradictory variants of Marxist doctrine. Contemporary progressives have, have embraced Marx's interventionist position. Human action is indispensable for comprehending the operation and consequences of interventionism, which is the least understood economic system. The treatise is the this treatise is the culmination of Mises' long-standing research program, which was to analyze and compare the three thinkable economic systems, capitalism, socialism, and interventionism, from the viewpoint of which best promotes social cooperation under the division of labor. During the 1920s, Mises published three books, Socialism in 1922, Liberalism in 1927, and Critique of Interventionism in 1929. As Mises pointed out, quote, altogether these books offer a comprehensive analysis of the problems of social cooperation. They investigate all conceivable systems of cooperation and examine their feasibility. These studies found their completion in national economy, the German language predecessor of, of human action, unquote. Mises dealt with the capitalist market economy and liberalism, but because socialism was written before liberalism, Mises was forced to analyze the operation of the capitalist economy and socialism to develop the concept of economic calculation, which requires the existence of market prices. The concept of economic calculation is essential to evaluating the ability of any economic system to rationally allocate resources. Mises explained, quote, when I set out to work on the, on, on the ideas in my book, Socialism, I felt compelled to develop especially the fundamentals of catalactics, or the theory of exchange, the market. Any theory of socialism that does not have at its very foundation a consideration of the problem of economic calculation is simply absurd." Unquote. Having completed his trilogy of works on capitalism, socialism, and interventionism, there were still two crucial elements missing from Mises' project to develop an integrated theory of human action, encompassing all three possible economic systems. First, Mises had not yet fully worked out the theory of economic calculation. Second, he had not explained the practical use of a priori economic theory for predicting the real world outcomes of different economic systems, in particular the, the effects of specific government interventions. He turned to these tasks in national economy, which is the German language predecessor of human action, as I mentioned. In reflecting on the main goal of the treatise, Mises wrote, uh, I'll, I'll use the term human action, he's using the term national economy. Um, my, na my, quote, my human action finally afforded me the opportunity to present the problems of economic calculation in their full significance. Only in the explanation offered in the third part of, of human action did my theory of monetary um, of money achieve completion. Thus, I had accomplished the project that had presented itself to me 35 years earlier. I had merged the theory of indirect exchange, or money, with the theory of direct exchange into a coherent system of human action. In approaching economic theory as a coherent system of human action, Mises demonstrated that research in economic theory is indissolubly linked with the analysis of alternative economic systems. This insight sheds new light on human action. It is both a treatise on economic theory and a discourse on comparative economic systems. Um, this is clear when we examine the org org organization of the book. Um, human action begins with an exposition of praxeology and its unique theoretical research uh, method. Yeah, yeah. Mises uses the praxeological method to deduce a system of economic theory grounded in the self-evident truth that every person acts, that is, behaves purposefully in using scarce means to achieve his or her most highly valued ends. By basing the deductive method on the undeniable fact that people act and a few factual observations about the real world, Mises ensures that economic theory is both true and applicable to the real world. Thus, whenever the conditions assumed by a particular economic theorem are present in reality, the economist can use that theorem to correctly predict the qualitative effects of, of economic policy. Rent controls below market rents will cause, will cause a shortage of rental housing. Price inflation will be reduced by reigning in the growth of the money supply. If central banks tamper with the, the market interest rate by expanding bank credit, they will cause financial bubbles and a real investment boom, followed by a wholesale collapse of asset prices and recession. 
The praxeological method thus contrasts sharply with the positivist method, which is in vogue still today in economics, which vainly seeks to derive tentatively val valid economic theories by constructing and manipulating static mathematical models disconnected from each other and from reality. Mises presented a thorough analysis of the concept of action and its immediate implications in parts one and two of human action. Um, part three, which you can see up there, is devoted to a comprehensive discussion of economic calculation, which Mises considers the logical prerequisite of theoretical research in, ec in economics. This sets the stage for part four, titled Catalactics or Economics of the Market Society. In this part of the treatise, Mises provides an exhaustive analysis of the operation of a market economy, using what he calls, quote, the imaginary construction of the pure market economy, unquote. Mises employs the praxeological method to deduce the core theorems of economics. This procedure of developing economic theory by first analyzing a free market economy in which economic calculation is unimpaired by coercion before examining socialism and interventionism is not a matter of convenience or of ideological bias. It is dictated by logical and systematic rigor. For as Mises explains, quote, the mental grasp and analysis of the problems present in a calculating market system were the starting point of economic thinking. The problems concerned are apparent and practical only within the sphere of the calculating market economy. It is only a hypothetical and figurative transfer which makes them utilizable for the scrutiny of other systems of society's economic organization, socialism, interventionism, which do not allow of any calculation. He ends, economic calculation is the fundamental issue in the comprehensions of all problems commonly called economic. Part five discusses cooperate, social cooperation without a market. In this part, Mises analyzes the imaginary construction of a socialist society in which private ownership, free exchange, and market prices of the factors of production are all absent. Using the mighty theoretical system he previously deduced by analyzing the imaginary pure market economy, which calculates, Mises demonstrates in five pages that in a perfect socialist society, economic calculation and therefore the economizing of the scarce factors of production would be impossible. Under these conditions, production becomes chaotic and social cooperation quickly disintegrates. The rest of the discussion of socialism involves Mises' refutation of the counter arguments to his position put forward by socialist and neoclassical economists. Part six deals with the hampered market economy or interventionism. Here Mises expounds his unique conception of interventionism utterly rejecting the conventional view that it constitutes a mixed economy or a third system um, that exists somewhere between socialism and, uh, and capitalism. Mises denies the possibility of intermixing elements of these two systems. There is either capitalism or socialism, and never the twain shall meet. Either consumers or government planners exercise sovereignty over the use of scarce resources. Any attempt to divide control of production between the two groups inevitably leads to an unstable re regime of sy systemic conflict and crisis because the market economy is a vast and intricate system of interrelated activities. An isolated government decree or intervention aimed at altering a particular market outcome inevitably changes the data of economic calculations. That is, it changes prices, profits, revenues, costs, uh, capital values, and so on throughout the system. This provokes a reaction by consumers and entrepreneurs that change the data yet again. What emerges is a third set of market conditions that is less preferred and may even be positively undesirable from the government's viewpoint. This may invite further interventions. For Mises, interventionism, therefore, is not a third economic system, but a market economy in which monetary calculation is continually distorted and elements of economic discoordination and chaos introduced from outside the system. In an unpublished manuscript written after Human Action was published, um, so it was building on Human Action, Mises called the problem of, called this, quote, the problem of divided supremacy, unquote, and argued that interventionism is self-contradictory. And I'm quoting from Mises here. The concept of supremacy logically implies indivisibility, either A, is called upon to decide, or B, 
If both A and B are to be supreme, an insoluble conflict emerges as soon as they do not agree with one another. In the market economy, the consumers ultimately determine the course of production. In a socialist system, it is the government. Interventionism acqui acquiesces in a spurious expedient of assigning supremacy to both consumers and the government. It is under the system of interventionism that economics renders its practical service as a predictive science. In the case of pure socialism, all an economist can do is to explain why the system is utterly incapable of allocating resources to their most valuable uses. He can make no predictions about the pattern of operation of socialism, because lacking the means of economic calculation, the system is foredoomed to a rapid descent into planned chaos. Nor can economics be of much service in predicting the concrete, of pa concrete patterns of, of resource use and pricing that will emerge in an unhampered or free market economy, because these depend ultimately on subjective and changeable consumer value scales and on entrepreneurs' anticipations of future market conditions, neither of which can be known by the economist with certainty. Put differently, when considering the pure market economy, the economist cannot ascertain the data of the system or their configuration at any moment in the future. For example, the economist knows with absolute certainty that an increase in the supply of wheat will cause a lowering of the price, but does not know if or when this event will occur. Entrepreneurs are far more astute than economists in forecasting such occurrences, and even their forecasts often go awry. Matters are wholly different re with respect to the regime of interventionism. For economists start with the knowledge of the specific economic policy to be imposed. They can then trace out the consequences using the true and realistic economic theory, theorems yielded by the praxeological method. They can, therefore, predict the pattern of future economic activities that will result, say, from the minimum wage or bank credit expansion. In the last book he wrote, Mises forcefully stated the claim for the predictive power of economic theory with respect to interventionism. He wrote, quote, economics can predict the effects to be expected from resorting to definite measures of economic policies. It can answer the question of whether a definite policy is able to attain the ends aimed at, and if the answer is in the negative, what its real effects will be. But of course, the prediction can only be qualitative. It cannot be quantitative because there are no constant relations between the factors and effects concerned. The practical value of economics is to be seen in this neatly circumscribed power of predicting the outcome of definite measures, so economics can predict in, 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 under the conditions of interventionism. Um, in his volume on epistemological problems of economics, Mises boldly placed praxeological economics on a par with the natural science, sciences and its predictive power. Quoting, economics too can make predictions in the sense in which this ability is attributed to the natural sciences. The economist can and does know in advance what, an effect, what effect an increase in the quantity of money will have upon the, its purchasing power, or what consequences price controls must have. Therefore, the inflations of the age of war and revolution and the controls enacted in connection with them brought about no results unforeseen by, economy, uh, uh, by economics. Mises' theory of interventionism predicts with certainty that the market economy, hampered by an ever-increasing array of mandates, controls, taxes, and regulations, will be afflicted by continual and deepening crises, crumbling infrastructure, financial crises, inflationary redistributions of wealth to mega-billionaire financiers, financiers trillion-dollar deficits, capital consumption, and erosion of labor productivity and real wages. All are crises caused by interventions, one piled atop the other. If the progressive left succeeds in imposing on society its crazed utopian view of egalitarian social democracy, humanity faces the gruesome reality of a perpetual crisis economy. There is, however, a powerful reason for libertarians to take heart from Mises' analysis. For interventionism is an unstable regime which lurches erratically to and fro between full socialism and the free market economy. Precisely because it contains the inherent contradiction of divided sovereignty, we can predict that it will be battered by endless crises. These crises will undermine the plans and morale of the ruling classes, while impoverishing, frustrating, and embittering the productive classes. This will foster an us-against-them mentality, which Murray Rothbard loved, the us-against-them. 
They're the bad guys, we're the good guys. And present an opportunity that can be exploited by libertarian thought leaders and opinion molders. These men and women, armed with the lessons of human action, and imbued with the Misesian spirit of human liberty would be well disposed to mobilize a militant mass reaction that ousts the progressive elites from their position of power and influence and propels our rotten interventionist system toward what the great, late, great Ralph Rako called the totally voluntary society, which was his euphemism for anarcho-capitalism. Thank you.